Leaving Battlefield for COD Modern Warfare. That's the kind of statement I'm currently seeing absolutely everywhere within the Battlefield community, or I'm seeing statements of a similar nature, accusations of jumping ship, creators selling out, and all the usual stuff that happens when a new game releases that could challenge the success of an existing title. Plus I'm unsurprisingly, and I guess reasonably, being asked what I'm going to do about it. Am I going to go to Call of Duty? Am I going to leave Battlefield behind? All this kind of stuff. I keep being asked these questions, I keep seeing other people saying it, I keep seeing people argue, so I thought what a great way to put this title in place that covers all of the aspects and I get to make my point about all of them. Lucky you, right? I'll talk about why I feel Modern Warfare is appealing to a lot of the current and definitely former Battlefield player base. I'll talk about my feelings towards the game itself, and I'll lay out some encouraging signs and some words of caution for gamers as a whole when it comes to Call of Duty. So this isn't a fully scripted video today, I've just got my bullet points down, I'm just going to say what comes to mind. Totally genuine, and I really want to hear what your thoughts are as well about any of the topics I hit today. Whether it be about Modern Warfare, Battlefield, future content, or whatever else, let me know in the comments below. So let's start with me, am I going to jump ship? Uh, well, I am definitely going to cover Call of Duty Modern Warfare if I get it and like it. I'm definitely going to buy it, I'm definitely going to try it, and if I enjoy the game, I'll cover it, because there's absolutely no reason not to. It wouldn't make sense for me not to branch out, especially now with the viewership as it is on Battlefield. It's basically stagnated, should we say, or, or even dipping down. Uh, it's not good. It's not good, especially for a channel my size. Not a tiny channel, of course. You know, I get decent viewership, but, you know, I'm not one of the big guys. And I'm never going to be whilst just covering Battlefield 5, of course. It's just not viable. So yes, I'll be playing Call of Duty, and I hope to enjoy it, but there's no guarantee. But what it will be for me is a fresh experience and it'll be fun again, at least for a while, you know, doing something new. It can get a bit draining just playing the same thing all the time and only making content on that, as I'm sure you understand. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to playing Call of Duty. It should be a lot of fun for me. I'm hoping some of my friends get it. I'm hoping maybe some of you guys get it and maybe we could do some sub games on stream. So that could be fun. And I will say quickly here, you know, this is about Call of Duty, but as I've said in a couple previous videos, it won't just be Call of Duty that I'm branching out into. It's not as if I'm dropping Battlefield, which I'm, I'm not necessarily, by the way. I'm not just, you know, letting that go and jumping ship completely. But it's not as if I'm just dropping Battlefield because Call of Duty is coming out and everyone's hyped about it. That's not what's happening. You know, I'm just going to cover games that I enjoy. Call of Duty is coming. The Destiny 2 Shadowkeep expansion is coming, which has my heart racing. It was a weird way of putting that, but I'm going to stick with it. And then there's also Borderlands 3, which I'm probably going to cover as well. So I don't want this narrative to form of, oh, get good guy, just jump ship. He's gone to Call of Duty from Battlefield. That's not really the case. I will say, though, that Call of Duty has some mechanics this year that really appeal to me and what I do with my content. Uh, it gives me the opportunity to do the fun stuff and the live stuff and weird things, but there's also the got massive customization of the weapons, so I could do different build guides and stuff, which I used to do all the time. It gives me the opportunity to look at different weapons and analyze them and put out different videos about them and what to do for this and that and how to counter this playstyle. It really falls into what I used to do with Battlefields and now I can't really do because there's just not much scope for it in Battlefield, oddly. There's, you know, just a reasonable clump of guns, there's not too much customization of them, there's just not much to it. So Call of Duty definitely has that appeal for me, and I'll be able to make some content that hopefully you and, and other people can really enjoy because of that. I've already got ideas of what I want to do, I've got loads written down, so yes, it, it looks like it's going to be good for me as long as I enjoy the gameplay, which as I said, isn't guaranteed. I'm not going to just jump on this hype train like some people are, you know, or get carried away with the marketing. We don't know if it's going to be good, we really don't. So we'll have to wait and see. But there's also the fact that it might translate across to my audience well, because they've got the 20v20 mode in it, the larger sort of thing. More Battlefield-esque kind of feel to it, which hopefully is going to be good. So that's a nice transition from Battlefield to Call of Duty, with still some similar sort of themes and things that you can grab onto and see as being constant throughout my content. But there's other modes as well. You know, I get to play the, the traditional Call of Duty stuff. There's 2v2, there's the 100 player mode, whatever that is. And to round out this section, just about myself and my plans, I used to play Call of Duty a lot. If we go back like six, seven years, I played Call of Duty for a good five years before that. I don't know, it was a long time I played COD as my main game, and it got pretty decent, so I'm looking forward to getting back into that. 
I then obviously found Destiny and then came across Battlefield and things altered, and I haven't played COD properly for a long time. But it's not as if I don't have Call of Duty roots, so we'll see if I can still pull something out of the bag with a bit of practice. The one downside being that I think I'm really bad now. Uh, <laughs> when I did play Call of Duty last year on stream once with Dame, I was horrendous, like I was awful. When I played the COD World War II beta the year before that, I was really bad, so it's gonna take me a bit to get back into it, I think. It doesn't play the same way as Battlefield and Destiny and things that I'm used to playing, so we'll have to see. Maybe I'll suck, but <laughs> at least hopefully it'll be fun. But now let's talk about the Battlefield community itself and how COD may affect it. Because I'm seeing a lot of talk about how Call of Duty might be aiming at the disenchanted section of the Battlefield community at the minute. You know, with the larger mode, with the customization, with the vehicles. And that's not crazy talk, I can totally see that. This would be the right time to try to grab more of the market because Battlefield 5 hasn't gone particularly well and a lot of the player base has fallen off. There is the huge weapon customization, an old thing that people liked in previous Battlefields I gather from BF4 and such like, at least as far as I'm aware. There's a little more considered gameplay, not totally just run and gun. There's as I said the 20v20 mode with the vehicles, there's all this kind of stuff which just sort of like link into Battlefield. And it's not an entirely tenuous link. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that Call of Duty or Activision or whatever have just decided, you know what, let's grab that market as well. And that's why it's appealing to Battlefield fans at the minute. Not all of them, of course. Some are sit there going, I will not play Call of Duty, I only play Battlefield, and that's fine, that's up to them, or you if that's you, totally cool. But it's not hard to see why Battlefield fans would be interested. This is a fresh new game. Battlefield 5 is not in a wonderful state. Call of Duty will probably release with nowhere near as many bugs. It will probably be supported better. There will be a larger player base, so there won't be as many issues with filling lobbies. People are willing to try new things now or go back to old things because they're not satisfied with what they they've got right now. Now there are some complaints about the 20v20 mode which is the thing that's probably appealing to a lot of Battlefield players but these complaints are just from some creators that have played it or what people have sort of witnessed from watching gameplay. It's not everyone, there are some people that seem to like it. What I will say though, whether it's good or bad because I've not played it, a lot of the complaints I'm seeing about the 20v20 mode are things that people already complain about in Battlefield 5, just not as bad. So there's a way of viewing it as people may jump across and enjoy it just more so than and Battlefield, even if it has those problems. You know, I'm seeing people talk about camping, about map size, about lack of direction, so many areas and sightlines, slower gameplay, visibility, or it's not like Call of Duty, the traditional Call of Duty, and all of that to me just sounds like what people complain about in Battlefield 5. So if it does it at least better than Battlefield 5, then it's not going to be a huge issue for the Battlefield community. But I do want to just temper things a bit here and help people to not get too carried away ahead of time, because just because things look good now, now with Call of Duty and just because it might be what people think they want, let's just say that it's not necessarily going to be what people are imagining from the Battlefield community. I'm seeing this sense from some people of looking at it and going, that's what I wanted. It's still Call of Duty, it's still different to Battlefield. It's not as if even if it does some things better than Battlefield, you're going to suddenly jump to that game and it's going to be everything you want it to be. It might be, but let me say, it is not going to be the Battlefield you wanted. It's just a somewhat different Call of Duty. Which which has some links to what Battlefield does. Let's absolutely keep that in mind. It's not as if it's going to fix all of the problems for everybody. And there will be some people that go to it and just straight up don't like it, and maybe that will then make Battlefield 5 look better. Maybe they'll get a different perspective on it, we'll see. And there's nothing to stop people playing both games, remember? We don't have to just pick one, it's not this weird rivalry that it's set up as. You can play both games, you can play loads of games if you want, you can play all the games, play them all, you get a game, and you get a game and I don't know where I'm going with this bit and actually let me just say because although we've moved on from the section about me I do want to stress here because I don't know if I made it clear in the first section this is not me saying I'm gonna just stop playing Battlefield completely we'll see what happens moving forward so at the minute I still plan to play it I plan to play some of the older ones as well I'm really looking forward to that I don't want anyone to freak out and panic okay <laughs> we're just gonna see how things pan out I mean look at what happened with Modest Pelican he started doing other games and now he barely ever does Battlefield because it just doesn't make sense for him and I I totally understand that and not many people seem to criticize him for that because they enjoy his content anyway. Now what about the general gaming community, not just Bashville players? Well I can see why there's hype around this Call of Duty and that's not really happened all that much with Call of Duty. It's gone from being a market leader to one that kind of takes ideas from other games.
games. And that is kind of what's happened again here, I guess. But it's a marked difference for Call of Duty and offers different things. The 2v2 mode, the 100 player mode, the 20v20, the normal Call of Duty. It sounds like there could be something for everyone, or at least for a lot of different players. Now we don't know what that 100 player mode is going to be, whether it's going to be a massive Battlefield-esque thing or another Battle Royale. Either way, it could take some of the market share again, just to link it back to Battlefield quickly. If it's a Battle Royale, then I don't know how long the hype for a Battle Royale is going to go on for, with just lots of different ones. But if it is, again, it might appeal to Firestorm players, because I know that Firestorm... How can I put this? The player base is small, and it's not that well supported. There's updates here and there, but they haven't even fixed the looting thing in it, to be honest with you. We were given the impression that was going to change, it wouldn't just be loot lying on the floor everywhere, and it's still not come to fruition. So you kind of have to wonder if that's ever going to happen. Then aside from that, again for the general gaming community, it looks like Call of Duty are bringing back gore, which is a good thing for some people, that more adult feel to it, a lot of blood and guts and stuff. I saw massive blood splatters in the gameplay. They seem to be doing a really good job with the marketing, which is very important. We saw with Battlefield 5, if you mess it up from the start, it's hard to pull it back. We've seen it before with other Call of Duty titles. Uh, I think it was, was it Advanced Warfare, possibly? I think it was. Can't remember. I think it was Advanced Warfare, where the uh, marketing did not go well to begin with, and that game had a struggle for a lot of its life after that. And there's hype around the game, and that's huge. Having hype around the game is massive. But also, some words of caution I want everyone to keep in mind. The game may be packed full of microtransactions, and we don't know how invasive they'll be. Call of Duty has done this in recent years and it's been a massive negative factor. So keep in mind that could be what takes place again. We saw the whole red dot site purchasing thing on Black Ops 3 I think it was. I think it was Black Ops 3. Either way we don't want things like that to happen but we'll have to see. We'll have to find out. It could be this game is dragged down by monetization but at least all DLC is going to be free I believe from what I've heard. So that's great. And they keep talking about cross platform so that's also a good thing. But another negative it is very easy to make games look good during the initial marketing cycle. Creators may well have rose-tinted glasses on when talking about it because it's a fresh experience. Trailers are carefully constructed to make things look great. And it is entirely possible the game comes out and it's not good. That is something that happens quite frequently now with AAA titles. We cannot assume it's going to nail it, but we can keep our fingers crossed. And I think that's basically what I have to say today. To sum up, I'm going to play Call of Duty. I hope to enjoy Call of Duty, but it doesn't mean I'm just leaving Battlefield behind. That question is now answered. Yes, I do think it's going to take a lot of Battlefield players, but not all, and not all will be satisfied that do move across. And yes, I do see why it appeals to the gaming community as a whole. They're doing a lot of very good things, but it could all fall apart if it doesn't work out. However, if it all goes well, this could be a new dawn for Call of Duty possibly, and maybe it can continue to push on from here. Only time will tell. And so let me know what you think in the comments below about anything I've talked about, please, today. I'd really like to hear your opinion. Just make sure you keep it classy, please. That would be good. We're just talking video games here. No one needs to be insulting. And if you enjoyed the video or found it informative, turn on those notifications for me. That would be fantastic because subscriptions aren't very reliable now. But I would still really appreciate, of course, if you would like, subscribe and join my Discord server. In the description, I'm a pinned comment. Here's the board of awesome for the epic people who support the channel on Patreon. They're all absolute heroes and I love them all deeply and of course often if you want to join them on the board of awesome The link to the patreon page is in the description and my pinned comment and with that all said I'm get good guy and I'll see you next time laters